Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video on using the input widget and we're going to cover three key areas when it comes to using the input widget, including how to set up validation, especially custom validation for the input widget. We're also going to take a look at how to bind in data from other widgets, other entities into the input widget. And lastly, I'll show you how to read data from the input widget into other entities like APIs or DB queries. I'm going to show you how to do all of these three in today's video. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is bring in an input widget. So I'm just going to search for an input widget and let us grab that and pull it in. And right here we have an input widget. To show you how to set up validation, there are a couple of predefined validation schemes already set up on the input widget by default. And that's where you have the data type. So you can set the input type to be of type text. You can set this to be of type number. And if I go in here to type in any text value, for example, I'm typing in some alphabets, it actually does not let me type it in. I can only type in numbers, for example. And you also have the type email, which would only be valid if a valid email address is applied. So for example, we can do something like you at me.com and that's a valid email address and this passes the validation. Lastly, we also have the password type, which mask input supplied and it's only visible when you click on the eye icon. So this is very useful when you're trying to enter in sensitive data like password. All right, let's set this back to text. Moving on to custom validation, you actually have the ability to write regex to perform some custom validations on the input widget. So I'm just going to paste in a regex pattern here. And what this pattern does is that it says this input is only going to be valid if whatever character is entered is an alphabet character, which can be a lowercase alphabet character or an uppercase char alphabet character with a space. And here we have non-alphabet characters, so this is invalid. We have the at sign and we also have the dot sign here. So I'm just going to delete all of this out. And you can see now we have a valid input. So if you like to perform some custom or complex validations on the input widget, you have the regex field here that makes it so much easy for you to supply a custom regex pattern to validate the input widget. But if you're like me and you aren't so good at regex, you can actually write JavaScript to perform these validations. So the next field we have just below the regex field is the valid field. And what you can do here is write JavaScript to determine the validity of the input widget. So for example, we can write a JavaScript pattern like this or a JavaScript code like this that checks if there is an A in the input supplied by the user. So this is going to be input includes, and we want to check that the user has supplied the text A. Uh, right now, there's no A character in the input, but the moment I type in an A, for example, you can see that this becomes valid. So we can say you and me, and this is a valid input because the user has an A supplied in the input. So this gives you more flexibility in cases where you are more comfortable with using JavaScript. You can actually write some JavaScript to perform the validation check for the input widget. The next thing I'm going to show you now is how to bind in data or pull in data from other widgets or other entities into the input widget. And to show you how to do this, I have a simple um, SQL query here. Uh, you can also imagine this to be an API call that returns a list of users. So I have this simple get users SQL query that returns a list of 10 users and you can see all of the records being shown right here. Now we can display this information in the application using a table widget. So I'm just going to click on the table widget here and we have that data linked to the table widget um, shown on the canvas. And let's bring up the name column up so that it becomes visible easily on the table. And here we have the ID, we have the name and the gender. So let's say we want to set up our application in such a way that we want to be able to select a user from the table and edit that user's name. That's having the user's name pre-filled and then we can go on to edit that user's name. 
So to do this, all we need to do here is to write a binding that lets us pull in the selected user's name from the table. And uh, this is where bringing in data from other widgets comes in. So to do that, you need to write the code in inside of curly braces or using a mustache syntax that's using these double curly braces. And then we can go on to type in something like the name of the entity, which in this case is the table widget. So we can say uh, table one dot selected row, and then we can do a dot name. And here we can see the name of the selected user shown up on the table widget. So we can go select a new user, for example, and you can see that that name has been updated. That's because we're using dynamic bindings here to pull in the name or the default text displayed on the input widget. So you can imagine this will work for other entities. For example, uh, right here, we have the get users query. Let's say we want, actually want to pull in data from the query directly without uh, going through the table. This is going to be get users the data and the data is an array. So we need to uh, check the first item and we can do it dot name, for example. And here we also have the user's name displayed. So that's how easy it is to bind data from other entities into the input widget. Now I just put back the original binding so that we're able to select the user and update the user's name. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to read data from the input widget. So let's say for example, we want to be able to update the user's name selected from the table. So we have that name being displayed on the input and we want to be able to update this name and save that data back to the database. For that, we need a query that actually does the talking to the database part. So let's create a new query. Um, here I have the user's database and here um, I have the schema that shows the table we are making use of. So I can click on this lightning add button and click on the update option here and AppSmith um, intelligently prefers a query that can be used to update a record on the user's table. So let's say this is update name, all right? And we only want to be able to update name, so I'm just going to delete all of the extra code here and we can uh, delete the comments here as well. So for the condition, we want it to be that it should be the ID of the user selected from the table. So this is going to be table1.selectedRow.id and we can see that this looks good. Uh, the last thing we need to do here is to read the data from the input widget. And to do that, as you already guessed, we need to write some JS binding using mustache syntax and then go on to access the name of the input widget. So this is going to be input1 and then we can do a dot text. And we can see that the value from the input widget has been read and we can see the evaluated value actually has the name of the user selected from the table. Now, you can also update the name of the input widget to be something more descriptive. So let's head back, for example, and I'm going to update the name from input one to, um, let's say, name inputs, all right? And that looks so much better. So heading back to the update name query, you can see that this has been updated as well. You have the name input instead of input one here. The last thing we need to do here is uh, build a button to actually run these queries because uh, we need a way to trigger the change we have made or to trigger saving of the change we have made. So I'm just going to bring in a button here real quick and let's say whenever we click on this button for the unclick, we want to go execute the update name query. And when that's successful, we want to refresh the state of our application so we can go run the get users query. And basically that's all we need to do. So let's say here we have uh, user 4 selected Jack Foster and we can go delete uh, the surname for example. So I can delete this and just have Jack saved. Clicking on the submit button would actually go save that change in the database and pull in the fresh data from the database. And here you can see we have just Jack showing up on the table. So that's how easy it is to read data from the input widget and have it go talk to an API or a DB query. Now we've just covered core concepts on using the input widget, including setting up validation, uh, binding data to the input widget, and reading data out from the input widget. You may be interested in writing JavaScript to manipulate the widget state, which also includes the input widget. So I'm going to leave this video right here. 
that shows you how to use JavaScript to manipulate the states of widgets, including input widgets. And you may also be interested in using other widgets in collaboration with input widget. In today's video, we saw how to use the table widget and input widget. You might be interested in using a widget like the list widget. So I'm just going to leave a link here to a video that shows you how to use the list widget and of course, using it with the input widget. That'll be all for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, leave a like and get subscribed and I'm going to see you in the next video. All right, take care, bye-bye.